Hello, let us continue our journey uh, in this course on polymers and uh, in this lecture, uh, let us look at uh, examples of uh, biomimetic features to arrive at uh, ideas related to polymeric materials. So, in this uh, week, we are largely focusing on uh, viscoelasticity in polymers and we have seen that how viscoelasticity of polymers is an important determinant of its overall applications, its uh, understanding that we have. And so, given that we know uh, a lot about polymers and their viscoelastic response, can we get inspiration or can we copy from uh, natural systems and arrive at uh, material systems which are far more sustainable than synthetic polymers. So, therefore, focus uh, is from the point of view of learning from uh, bio biology and uh, therefore, look at biomimetic polymers. And uh, so, the emphasis is on biomimetic materials as opposed to biomimetic devices. So, when we say it is a biomimetic device, it could be for example, an agent itself, right. So, uh, for example, a soft robot is an agent which uh, and we can say that uh, it is uh, mimicking uh, 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 let us say a load carrying uh, animal or it is mimicking an insect. So, that is basically uh, the overall robot itself mimics a certain uh, ag agent and it has a certain agency, it performs some function. Uh, it could also be for example, that it is uh, something which can move and uh, inchworm is basically uh, a, a, a species which uh, moves by pulling uh, one part of its body forming a loop and then pushing another body and that is how it moves. So, there is a very specific uh, mechanism by which inchworm moves. So, can I not get let us say a thin rod of material which initially is flat like this, then it becomes like this and then it moves like this. So, so then what we are doing is we are now getting a device which is capable of moving when applied in electric field or when pH is changed or some condition due to which it undergoes these shape changes and the effect of these shape changes is that it moves. And so, it is mimicking an inchworm while moving and therefore, we will say what we have done is arrived at a biomimetic uh, device which mimics the locomotion that is exhibited by an inchworm. And so, such uh, biomimetic things can be there for stick insect uh, or jellyfish or uh, butterfly and so on. We can also have a device specifically which is a far more specific thing. It is just a sensor which let us say measures pH or it is a sensor which measures humidity or like artificial nose, it can measure 4 or 5 different uh, uh, smells or 4 or 5 different compounds which are important from smell point of view. And the skin for example, so it can measure uh, the touch or the mechanical uh, loading of uh, different kinds. So, therefore, these are all uh, biomimetic devices which are mimicking skin property, mimicking uh, a nose or so on. Now, uh, we could also have a biomimetic feature in the device or in the member or in a material. We could just have a surface and uh, here for example, lotus leaf is a very common uh, way in which uh, people talk about surfaces and can we mimic whatever may be the patterns there on a lotus leaf. To, uh, in a synthetic material and get similar properties to lotus leaf. So, that is again saying that I, I will mimic a pattern surface, it is a specific feature in a material. But all of these are talking about the biomimetic uh, phenomena in a, either a member or a device. For this course of purposes, what we uh, will confine our attention is to biomimetic polymers. And why should we do that? Uh, it is because uh, when we make a device or when we make an overall agent, we have combination of several, we have joints, we have things. So, for example, something which moves uh, will have to have different components and they are joined together and, and uh, each component may be rigid, especially if we make it out of metals and ceramics and other materials. But if we want to utilize the wide range of modulus and flexibility which is exhibited by polymer. Again, what we may have to do is uh, put a flexible polymer, then put a rigid polymer and all that. So, again, we will have to combine and 
join several materials. But can I not transfer some of these in terms of the control by changing the morphology and material properties, the intrinsic material characteristics itself. So instead of uh, joints and complex machine elements doing a job, can I not do it based on a material itself and it is changing. So for example, if I make a, a, a rod uh, like this and uh, can I not have the morphology here in such a way that let us say if I change the temperature, the morphology will change here and it will deform and then I get basically the action which is there due to a joint in a. So what we are trying to do now is uh, develop a polymer which itself can change based on the conditions changing. And the question that we are trying to ask is can we learn anything from biological polymers in this. Uh, the other word which is quite commonly used is bio inspired and uh, in biomimetic we are trying to copy certain feature, uh, it could be an agent, it could be device, it could be a polymer. So we take a look at biological system and then we try to say we will mimic that in our uh, agent or our material system. The other could be bio inspired, for example, flight. So flight of an aircraft is a bio inspired in the sense that uh, birds fly and therefore aircraft uh, fly is something, a machine which can fly also was the idea of the aircraft. But the two are very different. So it is bio inspired that one should have a, be able to fly, but it is not uh, the control systems and the design of an aircraft is very different compared to how a bird is designed. On the other hand, we could make a biomimetic device which flies, which is like bird. So that will be a very different, uh, so that is biomimetism as opposed to bio inspiration. So biomimetic uh, polymer, uh, I will just give a example from lubrication and again uh, biomimetic polymers are not very common. Uh, there is a lot of uh, research still going on in trying to learn from biology and evolve polymeric systems which will do the job the way biomimetic polymers, uh, the way they do in biology. And one example is in lubrication because uh, lubrication is there in all our joints. And, uh, Generally, uh, so we have lubricants uh, in uh, machines because there are complex mechanisms and different machine parts move with respect to each other and lubrication and greases uh, will have to be provided. Similarly, we have biolubricants which are uh, also called synovial fluids and they are there in all our joints. So can we learn looking at synovial fluids and then try to do something related to lubricants which are used in machines? So then that is what is biomimetic polymer. So by, just to give you an idea why would one want to do this is uh, look at the friction coefficient of a synovial fluid. It is in fact lower than uh, ice because many more often than not we see uh, people slipping on ice or ice being very thin and it is in fact also there in uh, languages saying that you are uh, you are uh, on thin ice which means you are on slippery slope and things like that. So, so generally friction on ice is supposed to be very low. but the synovial fluid has friction coefficient even lower than that. And uh, what is a synovial fluid? It is basically actually a complex uh, biological system in which there are layers. So there are three layers. There is a base layer, there is an anchor layer and then there is a loose layer. And each of them contain different components. And uh, what I have noted down here are just the broad components. A biological system of course is much more complicated and contains many other components also, small molecules, salts. So ionic environment, macromolecular flexibility all combined together to make this functional. And so there are small proteins in the base layer, then there are mucines which is the key determinant of the synovial fluid properties. And uh, so mucines are there in both of these layers and they form these loops or linear structures and that is what determines the overall lubricating properties of synovial fluid. So when we are thinking in terms of biomimetic uh, polymers, can we look at mucin and can we say that does this give us any idea about design of macromolecular systems. So for example, it is known that uh, lubricin and mucin which are uh, commonly observed polymers in synovial fluid, they are all branched. So then branched architecture may be a very good uh, property to have in terms of macromolecular systems if we are searching for new bio lubricants. 
So can we get uh, lubricants which uh, have branched architecture? Can we get functional groups which are similar to biolubricants? Or can we get uh, targeted interactions based on these functional groups which can then react with other macromolecules or other small molecules which are surrounding? So this is biomimetic thinking. And of course, all of this is still in the research domain, but this is an important uh, direction in which again sustainability can be thought about because we know that the uh, synovial fluids and uh, other macromolecular systems which are involved in such biological systems uh, are sustainable from the point of view of uh, circular, uh, they being incorporated into biogeochemical cycles, there is biodegradation pathways available for them, the uh, raw materials for them are coming from renewable sources and so on. So therefore, uh, biomimetism can also be one way of solving the sustainability issues related to macromolecular systems. The other uh, 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 challenge uh, that I want to leave you with and again as I may have been mentioning twice in this lecture already that these are all still research questions and uh, a lot of us have to do work in this area for biomimetic polymers to become much more common is uh, look at another polymer which is collagen which is uh, part of our tissue. Can we look at how uh, collagen does assembly and come up with this tissue as a structure and tissue is what gives strength to our uh, body and tissue mediates the interaction between different parts uh, one side subjected tissue to the other side of the tissue how interactions happen through molecular exchange through deformation all of that is determined based on tissue. So it has a very important role. So collagen as a macromolecule is there and then it is important component of tissue. So how does this scale different length scales in the end uh, through molecular interactions through assembly how do we get this from macromolecule to tissue. So just to highlight that uh, what uh, we can look at is basically uh, the uh, genes of collagen through which we form the secondary structure and uh, basically the helical structure of uh, a collagen strand which is called the protocollagen strand and each of them have different lengths. So this is uh, very small and then there is an assembly in terms of helix which gives us the triple helix and uh, that has a diameter of uh, uh, around uh, 60, 70 nanometers and these uh, actually form into mac microfibril. So these triple helix stack with each other and then form microfibril. This is basically part of the quaternary structure and this happens through self assembly uh, while tissue is being generated. And these fibrils then again stack up and uh, uh, microfibrils to give you fibrils and these fibrils stack up to give you the bundles and these bundles intermesh each other to get finally the tissue. So can we mimic some of these properties to get a structural material like tissue and can we start looking and getting inspired from collagen? Of course, one easy answer in this is to just use collagen directly, but is it possible? for us to manipulate, produce, manufacture collagen in such quantities which a body is able to do. Or in the end can we devise a polymer which is mimicking collagen and in then hopefully it can mimic also the tissue generation that collagen does. And so in general uh, in uh, uh, macromolecular research uh, scientists are grappling with this idea of uh, trying to take uh, biomimetic uh, polymers and then see whether they can do many of these things which are already being done in biology. So can they play the role of a hydrogel or a shape memory polymer so that sensors, actuators, members uh, uh, and uh, active components can be formed from these polymers. So with this thought uh, we will uh, close this lecture. Uh, biomimetic polymers is still a promise uh, which still has to be looked at before uh, we can see many applications from it. But uh, from a sustainability point of view, it is probably a very good direction to take in terms of looking at new sets of polymers. Thank you.